I, I, I want to talk about uh, I want to talk about business activism, mm -hmm. CEO activism, uh, because I, I've been covering business for four decades, and I think something has profoundly changed in the last decade. There used to be a very clear line between what business responsibilities were, what government responsibilities mm -hmm. were. If you got into hot button social issues, most CEOs would be under the table in a heartbeat. You know, didn't want to talk about it, didn't want to go there, it's not my bottom line. And you were kind of at the front end of changing that. Uh, when Indiana, was it four years ago, five years ago, passed a religious liberties law that you perceived as being discriminatory, you stepped out. It wasn't even in San Francisco, it was in Indiana. Why did you do it? What was going on there? Well, the, re the reason why we got involved and the reason why we get involved in most things is it's driven by our employees. And I think that if you're, to kind of get to your question of what's happened in the last decade is that as millennials have entered the workforce, um, and companies like mine, they're far more active and more involved in um, uh, creating the culture. Uh, before, I think kind of the culture was kind of very lonely job of the HR executive or maybe even the CEO. And now uh, the workforce realizes they're actually a critical part of making that happen. And so you're really seeing, you know, active employees and that's creating active CEOs. And you can see a lot of examples where, you know, we have significant employee activism in tech companies, for example, that has changed the course of the history of the technology industry. And how do you, I, I think that's a really interesting point. We had a presentation earlier about millennials, and one of the things we didn't get to in that presentation is because millennials are, are taking longer to get married, uh, they're less likely to be involved in organized religion, they're less likely to join social clubs, groups, the Elks Club, the Moose Club, the Rotary Club, whatever, uh, that right. the employer becomes their most important formal connection to society, and they put a lot of hopes and dreams mm -hmm. and values into yeah. you as the employer. Well, I, I think also that they're just realized they have a choice where they can work. And the, 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 the thing is, is that you know, they wanna be in an environment and a business that is about purpose. That they want to make sure that the company that they're in is actually committed to improving the state of the world. That that is a critical part of the employees that we're hiring today. And certainly the next wave of employees, imagine that two or three X. So yeah. we're just getting a taste of the future. And I think that why that's exciting, okay, is really kind of what I call, you know, there's, there's a door that is definitely opening. And you know, for the last four or five years now, we've been talking about the fourth industrial revolution. And the fourth industrial revolution is very powerful because you can see all these information and biotechnologies. You've done an exhaustive amount of work on it yourself. And that could be the cloud computing and artificial intelligence or autonomous vehicles. On the biotechnologies, it could be all the next generation immunotherapies or gene therapies. I mean, robotics, there's a wide variety of uh, technologies that have been unleashed. But what is going to happen, and you can already start to see it, is that you have these very young people, very young, some who haven't even entered the workforce yet, getting coupled with these next generation technologies. And what they're doing is they're bringing them together to create this fifth industrial revolution, which is all about actually saving the planet. And you can see it with someone like Greta Thunberg, who's this Swedish activist who we met at the World Economic Forum, yep. who at the time we didn't, hadn't really even seen her become as famous as she is now. I mean, she was even on the cover of Time Magazine. I don't know if you saw that, Alan. Yeah. Uh, but do you have something to do with that? You, I, do you choose no, covers? I do not. But <laughs> I will. I was impressed that you know somebody like that. It gets has such a high profile, because and, and and the reason why is because she's an example of somebody who's using technology to create the world that she wants and knows how to do it. And I think that you're going to have lots of people who emerge like that, and to your original point, it's gonna happen in our businesses too, yeah. so and, it, and it is. It's a great moment, and it's an exciting moment, but you got people who, want, who have a lot of opinions that may not be the right thing for the company, may not be right. the right thing for the country. I mean, you had an interesting moment when your employees said, hey, we don't wanna do work for the Custom and Border Patrol. That's right. I said, really? Yeah. Where, like, you're not gonna support protecting our borders? So, so how, do you de how do you decide yeah. which impulses to support and which impulses to resist? 
Well, I think this is, a, this is now CEOs are going to have to react to these changes. So what is the first thing the CEO is going to have to do? Well, all of a sudden, you know, I got labeled um, activist CEO, okay? And um, it wasn't me. You know, I'm just finishing this book right now called Trailblazer. It comes out in October. I saw some, uh, you know, right at the end of the process. And, you know, it's really the story of this is not me. It's not about me. You know, I didn't become this all of a sudden this activist CEO. It was, I got kind of pushed, you know, by my employees into it. And my job as CEO is to listen deeply to my employees and my customers and to respond to them effectively. You mentioned like Tableau. I'm doing that because it's customer driven, you know, like I was with the... The, the investors aren't crazy about it. I was, well, the investors, they will, you know, see just as they've always seen, you know, how amazing it is. Over time. Oh, well, it's you, just spectacular. I mean, you know, it's just a spectacular um, uh, combination. Yeah, and but I didn't mean to... That was also like a year ago we, when we bought MuleSoft, but let's, but let, let's keep moving forward. So this odd concept of it's about how do you listen to CEO? How do you listen to your employees? How do you listen to your customers? And that might, then you might be called, oh, I'm an activist CEO because I'm responding to what my employees want, okay? Um, but it's not true. The reality is if you're not gonna do that, you're not gonna be the CEO. And we have a lot of examples actually in Silicon Valley of CEOs who are no longer CEOs because they did not listen. Fired, by, the, not fired by their employees. Fired by their employees. And it's gotten really close on some super high profile, yeah. you know, CEOs. Where, CEO, you know, you see employees like storm out of the building because they're unhappy with a critical part of the uh, culture. So You're talking Google? This, I'm not naming any names. I just want to say that, you know, there is a moment where, um, you know, things can tip. And you have to pull back as a CEO and say, who am I, what am I doing here, and am I listening? And now, and the one other point is this, which is that because of that, you're gonna, you're gonna be faced with these kinds of challenges by your employees. You better have a, a repository for that that you can then process that. So, Most so organizations don't. And that's why we created our Office of Ethical Use. Because like, for example, in the example of the Custom and Border Patrol, when our employees say, well, should we be doing business with this organization or should we not? Then we can say, oh, well, here, we can actually talk to um, custom, the, um, this uh, so Office of that... Chief, Chief Ethical yeah. Use and let them be the arbitrator. So of how would that have been? Tell us how this works. I mean, so you had a bunch of employees who came to you. They said, we should stop doing business with Customs and Border Patrol. You said, I don't agree. I, no, I didn't say that. I said, I would say, I would never say such a thing. I think if you're a CEO and you say that, you are in big trouble. I don't agree, I, I this, I that. You know, what I said was, what, I am an expert in this all of a sudden? Somehow this is now also something that I have to do but as you, CEO? you accepted this. Not man, only I do them. I have to do all these other things, I now have to do point. this. No, that is you, not. But you kind of led the way into this. It's not the act. job of the CEO. That's a, as a CEO yourself, you know that's not the job of the CEO because the job of the CEO is then to create a process and a structure that lets it auto resolve. And, you know, we'll do whatever we need to do. And okay, for so, example, yeah, so how you know, we hired um, uh, Paula, who's going to speak, I think, later today. Yeah. And her job is she's a phenomenal person in this. Ex world-renowned expert in this area, and then she sets up an organization, and those employees can go, and they can be fully vetted. And in some cases, there will be action. In some cases, is there's it, not. Is it a democracy? Do you take an employee vote? How, how does she, what is her process to decide whether well, you Well, you're going to have to business? ask her, I guess. That's why you have her on stage, Alan. But, you know, as an well, example. What good is a CEO if you can't do that? Well, one of the things in, you know, we're, we, we have an amazing thing. We have a, we have a incredible product line. Um, some that we've built organically, some inorganically. And one uh, amazing inorganic acquisition we bought uh, uh, several years ago now is Demandware, which is now our commerce cloud. 
And we sell a huge amount online, like Adidas. You know, We're selling lots of Adidas shoes, and everybody wants access to this commerce cloud technology because you can just radically increase the velocity of your sales, and it's got artificial intelligence, our Salesforce Einstein built into it, it's next generation, it, it's built into our customer 360, it works with all of our other products. So we have a lot of gun sellers coming to us and saying we want to sell guns, and we're not opposed to selling guns. Then we had bump stock sellers coming to us, we want to sell bump stocks. Then we had our employees who are in the commerce cloud see that and come to Paula and say, Paula, we can't do can, this. Not, well, they said, should we be doing this? Is this ethical? Like, how do you look? And through you know, our own resolution, study, evaluation, ec uh, in mitigation with other experts, outside voices, inside voices, we decided we're not gonna sell bump stocks. That's not something that Salesforce is going to do, and um, but I'm not going to make that decision. I don't think I can. I think I have. I think it's better for the company if this is actually a professionally. Because by the way, it's not just that. There is a list, okay, of things that employees want evaluated, right? And not Probably just for my company. Way. I'm sure in your organization and every organization. But if you do not make those changes then you cannot say, if business is the greatest platform for change and you're going to focus on these changes, you can't focus on everything and you can't do everything. You make and you're not going to take on every cause and whatever. But you do have to kind of have a North Star. And it better be around a structured process to make that happen. And that's why I think an office of ethical use, we might be the first ones in technology to do that, but we will not be the last. Just as we... Well, is it, We're the first to put in a chief of quality or, officer. You think it's just technology, or think, you think it's much bigger than that? You think this is something that has to be adopted across the board? I think this is far bigger. Well, I, I went through all the biotechnologies. I mean, you talk yeah. about the ethical use well, of the biotechnologies is amazing. I, uh, uh, I'm sure there are questions, comments. He has to have provoked a few of you here. Yes. And Jim, please identify yourself for Mark. Jim Zalkowski, I'm the CEO of BuildOn. Um, first, I want to thank you, Mark, and everybody at Salesforce for the incredible partnership that you've built with us. We've worked closely with Parker Harris and Mark Hawkins and a big team. And I see Paula here, who we're going to talk to in a little while. So what we've done together is deep service immersions, 36-hour immersions on, in the South Bronx, South Side of Chicago, and Deep East Oakland. And together, we've been building schools in Malawi, Africa. But, but Jim, there's a question here, I'm sure. And, and the question is this. Let that him talk, is powerful. Alan. We, <laughs> no, it's your moment. <laughs> no, I don't need a moment. <laughs> well, you, you talked a lot about how millennials are setting culture. And my question to you is, what is the next generation of social impact for millennials, and how will you harness that at Salesforce? Thank you. Well, I mean, I've been basically on the road nonstop for the last 120 days, and it's been a very powerful process, and it's resulted in this acquisition. It's resulted in a lot of very interesting things, uh, changes that I've made to the organization. Um, I've been all over the world, and I'll tell you the number one thing uh, that's on my mind is reskilling. Um, last night even we opened our new Salesforce tower here in New York City and I met somebody who came up to me and said, and I retweeted his tweet because he was a very sweet you know, thing that he did, said, and uh, was um, when I got up this morning I remembered, oh yeah, this incredible story. So he comes up to me and he says, you know, I'm not part of the fourth industrial revolution. I was part of, I don't think I was part of the third industrial revolution. <laughs> I was a baker. And I knew that that is not gonna get me to where I wanted to go. And I got on your platform, which we call trailhead.com, and I reskilled myself. And I, I, have a, I have this next generation of skills. And now because of that, I am squarely in the fourth industrial revolution and I, yeah. You know, I have this incredible career. And I think that there is this arc where, you know, we have this kind of uh, group of people that we need to bring with us into the future. And we cannot leave these people behind. And that this concept of not just workforce development, but core reskilling, 
that is in all of these amazing technologies, what we're talking about, AI or blockchain or in, even information security, and even in the areas of ethical use, all of the areas of compliance of our organization, we really need to all go to another level, but we, I really see this imperative of bringing everybody with us into the future. That's a great example because 10, 15, 20 years ago, we thought of that as a government responsibility, not a business responsibility. Has that changed? Oh, well, I think it absolutely has changed because we know the government can't do anything. So, so what's changed is our understanding and expectations of government. Well, I think a great example is I was with a government executive recently talking about this, and they had set up programs in Appalachia, and then they were lamenting, well, I guess the, we can't really do this because this program has failed. And they had gave me the URL and all that, and, I, and then I countered with, well, take a look at our program in Appalachia. And here is all the, here, this is one is working, and here's why, and here are the, and that we can actually point to these success stories. And rarely a day goes by that I don't now get re-inspired that this is possible, that somebody can get on trailhead.com, can reskill, not just for our platform, but for other platforms, not just for our technology, but for other technologies, and that this is going to be something that's going to, this is, in my world, this is also an ethical issue. Yeah. That is, you know, yes, everyone in this room has a job, at least most of the people, and that we, um, you know, are marching into the fourth industrial and fifth industrial revolution together, but um, not everybody is with us. So I, I, I talked yesterday about how this uh, CEO initiative grew out of an event that we had at the Vatican in December of 2016. In January of 2017, we started talking about it at a, at a dinner in Davos. And as we were talking about it, you raised your hand and boldly said, I will be your founding sponsor. That is not exactly the story. The story that is was, like this. That's the way I remember it. Basically, I was reading Fortune magazine and it was just one kind of very bad story about the next. And I was like, you know, there is tremendous optimism in the future, but there are stories of tr change makers. Yeah. And we need to highlight the change makers so that people can be inspired by the change makers. And uh, that was the idea. And I said, hey, Alan, we need to profile what some of the we're, good we're things that. that are happening. I know that the dark doing parts of the media are sell more magazines, but it's the good stuff that you know, well, we need to kind of anchor to so that we can model that going forward. We're doing forward. that too. My quick question for you yeah. is, is what can we do as a community mm -hmm. Uh, what, what's your advice for us? You were there at the beginning. You, yeah. You, you, well, I think something. You know, I think that the most important thing is to do something, one thing. Find the thing inside yourself. Deeply listen to yourself, if not to your employees, if not to your customers. Listen to yourself. Go deep inside yourself and ask yourself one question. What is the one thing that I can do to make the world better? And if everybody does just one thing, that has a sense of personal and individual responsibility, the world will get better. But also we have to do it in our companies. Salesforce has lots of examples of things you can do, but everybody can, everybody can do at least uh, one A great thing. piece of ending advice, do something. All Write right. that down. Yeah, Mark, thank you thank very you. much. Thanks for having me.